and my art name is taken from a joke that belongs to a Russian writer, Vladimir Korolenko, the writer quite important for the history of Russian-Jewish uh, relationships in literature, because he was one of the writers and publishers who intensely supported uh, Russian young writers of Jewish background in the late 19th, early 20th century, and, correspond and uh, had a correspondence and collaboration also with uh, uh, writers from Yiddish spectrum. He dealt a lot with uh, ethnic minority issues, including ethnic abuses. One of them was uh, blood li the blood libel against Jews. And Korolenko is known, among other many things, as a s one of uh, civic defenders for Mendel Bayliss, the Russian Dreyfus, who was accused of uh, ritual murder in 1913. Korolenko is a very well-known Russian, um, one of the first human rights fighters. And as a writer, he was a stubborn realist in the era of modernism. He wrote short stories, documental stories, narrative stories, uh, dealt a lot with issues of minorities, diaspora, immigration, otherness and othering, including ethnic minorities, Jews, and many other kinds of minorities. For example, being challenged as a blind. One of his very famous writings is The Blind Musician, uh, which um, discusses experience of being blind and of being a musician. And probably these two things as intimately connected with each other because being creative is being challenged and being challenged enables some alternative kind of creative activity, describing world and uh, sounds instead of colors and many other things he deals with in this novel. Also, he is the author of the practically first novel about Russian immigrant in America without language, Bez Yazyka. It describes a Russian immigrant in America, by the way, with a Jew as his Virgil in America, who shows him the new world with all these good old times versus bad new times laments, you know. It's very interesting, writer, in many ways. Uh, among other things, he has a fairy tale, Yom Kippur, The Atonement Day. Uh, practically, it's a parable about uh, it's an ethic parable about how important it is to be not to blame people just because they are, for example, Jewish. It's some kind of like, it's about Jews and Ukrainians uh, with a lot of jokes with some Nikolai Gogol traditions and still very anti-anti-Semitic. Why I love Karolenko? Mostly because my teacher in the university, my mentor, my ult one of my ultimate mentors in the university, Nikolai Ivanovich, but not Lobachevsky, Nikolai Ivanovich Liban, Mm, uh, just opened his seminar on Korolenko when I entered the grade in the university where I was supposed to uh, to choose a theme for paper. You know, so uh, I when I started to be a songwriter, it came to my mind to call myself uh, in honor of Vladimir Korolenko. Mm, Partly because it just sounded cool, interesting, because Korolenko uh, created a nice joke referring to the family custom of calling children straight according to the calendar. Every day had a saint, and uh, his brother was called Ilarion, their father was Galaktion, and Korolenko says that I could have been named Psoi if I was born at such a day. I'm now Vladimir just by an accident. Soy sounds funny in Russian because of its uh, resemblance with Pios, dog, and we often find this name in Russian comedies like Ostrovsky of 19th century. Therefore it sounds both funny and 
serious because the actual Saint Psoi is one of the very ancient figures, one of the fathers of monastery, he belongs to the early Christian era. It is a Coptic saint, and the Psoi Bishoi is a Coptic name. So the thing is that it's both serious and funny, both ancient and modern, both uh, othering and intimately referring to, to oneself, to yourself. So, and last not least, it sounds a perfect name for a rock star or for a rock band. I always wanted to be a rock band. That's it.